Okay. All right. Are you ready? Ready for us? Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Good morning and happy new year to everyone. I want to thank you for being with us here today for this announcement. As we kick off this project, the Fair Transit South Cook project, we're one step closer to ensuring that our residents who live in, Cook, in South Cook County have the same access to affordable and timely modes of transportation as their neighbors to the north and in the heart of the city. I'd also like to thank our transit partners Metra Executive Director Jim Derwinski, PACE Board Chair Rick Kwasniewski, Executive Director of PACE Rocky Donahue, and Regional Transportation Authority Board Member Mike Lewis for being with us here today. I'm grateful for your partnership. And my thanks also go to our former Superintendent of the Department of Transportation and Highways in Cook County, John Yonan and the acting superintendent, Jennifer Sis Killen. Your department has worked timelessly to fulfill our vision for a more equitable Cook County. I'm grateful for your continued ded dedication to our residents. Cook County, along with our partners at Metra Pace and the RTA, have gathered here today to mark the beginning of Fair Transit, a program designed to make transportation more accessible and affordable for residents who live in or travel in South Cook and North Will counties. The word fair has been included in the title of this project for a reason. Fair implies a proper balance. Fair means unbiased, objective, impartial, and equitable. Fair transit is just that. I'm a firm believer that how your money is spent sends a, says a lot about your values. I value people, and I will continue to make investments that benefit our residents who are often overlooked and underserved. The Southland has long been plagued by a lack of access to transportation and affordable options to get residents to their destinations. Time spent waiting on a train or bus could mean the difference between keeping or losing a job. And right now, in the current climate, with the pandemic, every dollar counts. The pandemic has disrupted all aspects of our daily lives, and the way we commute is no exception. Not all of our residents have the option to work from home. These are Cook County's essential workers. They get up in the morning, mask up before heading out the door, and take public transportation to their jobs. I speak for all of us standing here today when I say that we're extremely grateful for your dedication and service. We know the last nine months haven't been easy, and we're thankful for each and every one of you who've continued to show up for us. 
So let us show up for you. Now more than ever, it's important to consider the transportation challenges our residents face. The core of fair transit is to create equitable access to transit options. There will be fare reductions on Metro Election electric and Rock Island lines, as well as improved and extended hours of service on PACE's 352 Halstead route, the most heavily utilized route in the system. As I've said over and over again, our residents who live in the Southland have been disproportionately affected by disinvestment, redlining, mass incarceration, lack of access to affordable and reliable transportation options. These residents also spend up to half their income on transportation-related expenses. I think that's worth noting. They often spend up to half their income on transportation-related expenses. The implementation of this project will help ease that burden. I'm proud to say that our partners at Metro and Pace look forward with us to this important step to make transit options fair for everyone, no matter your zip code or your neighborhood. Now is the time to showcase our commitment and investment to ensure residents have access to affordable and enhanced transportation options that they deserve. We'll get through the economic challenges presented by the pandemic together. And with this project, we will do so while ensuring transportation costs stay low and service remains high for residents when they need it most. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Metro CEO Jim Derwinski, and we uh, it, want to uh, say that our, our Metro board chair, Romaine Brown, uh, could not be with us today because of a death in the family, but we're grateful that Jim could join us. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Madam President. And as you stated, our chair, Romaine Brown, wanted to be here today, and because she couldn't, she asked me to read her remarks to you. Good morning, and thank you for coming. I would like to begin this morning by expressing my deepest gratitude to President Preckwinkle. I can honestly say that this pilot would not have been possible without her. It is through her vision and leadership conceiving this pilot commissioning the study and working with stakeholders that made this happen. Of course, having a financial backing of Cook County is essential, and for that we are grateful. So here we are, launching a pilot program that will spark economic activity and provide opportunity to thousands of Cook County residents and Metro riders, and we owe it all to her. I can tell you that Metro works hard to keep its fares in check. In fact, even with rising expenses, we've been able to go three years without a fare increase. But this opportunity was truly a godsend and an easy call for us to participate. And as we say in the rail business, we're completely on board. I have lived in Cook County most of my life that makes this program very personal to me. This program will help overcome decades of disinvestment in the region, the need for transit in the communities that lack transit options, and finally, the high expense of efficient transportation. During this pandemic, we have seen that Metro Electric and Rock Island lines carry a significant number of essential workers for whom public transportation is a lifeline. With this effort, we are promoting transit equity and supporting those essential workers and those most in need, getting them to where they need to go safely. We are making transit easier choice and a better choice for those who need to travel to work, school, or even leisure activities. It is truly a win-win situation for everyone. For those of you who have not seen some of our recent communication, you'll notice the phrase, My Metra. My Metra is about creating the best transit experience in the nation. It's about demonstrating to you that Metra is for all of us. We want you to think of it as My Metra. Finally, I should highlight the efforts that we've made in transit to make it easier during the pandemic. We want to assure everyone that our system is clean and safe. 
That's why every day we are disinfecting our trains. It is because we have a mask policy and only one person per seat that we have good attendance on our trains. It's because that we have hand sanitizers now in every car. And it's because we use hospital-grade air filters. And every four minutes, we recycle the air inside the train car. Think about that, fresh air every four minutes. So for all those reasons, you can commute with confidence. I'd like to conclude once again and thank President Preckwinkle for this great contribution. And for the rest of you, I'd like to invite you back on our trains whenever you're ready. I'm certain that you will feel safe, that you will find the experience better than ever. Oh, and yes, it will cost half the price. Thank you. And on behalf of Metra's entire board of directors and their staff, we look forward to this par par partnership. And as we say in the rail industry, we plan to have clear signals ahead. That means the signals will all be green. Good morning. I'm Rick Kwasniewski, the chairman of PACE. We're very happy to be here today. And thank you especially to President Preckwinkle for your leadership with the Fair Transit South Cook Initiative. Paceman, PACE's commitment and participation with this program supports PACE's mission to provide reliable and equitable public transportation. We're proud to be partners with Cook County and Metra. PACE is committed for continued improvement of public transportation, even in the faces of this pandemic. PACE's service improvements will include enhancements to Route 352, which is the most utilized route in the PACE network, with an average weekly ridership of approximately 5,000 riders a day. This pilot will allow PACE to provide more frequent, reliable service in this corridor along Halstead between the CTA Red Line Station at 95th and the Dan Ryan and the PACE Chicago Heights Terminal by tripling the number of trips during the peak times and nearly doubling the amount of trips during non-peak and on weekends. Service enhancements will also be made 24 hours a day between the CTA 95th Street Dan Ryan and PACE's Harvey Transportation Center. PACE also sees this benefiting for regional connectivity. It's truly a game changer for the south suburbs. With improved access and more opportunities for residents of Harvey, East Hazelcrest, Homewood, Glenwood, and Chicago Heights. Transit is a key piece of infrastructure and will be crucial for our region's economy recovery. On behalf of myself, the board, PACE Board of Directors, our employees, and of utmost importance, our riders, we thank President Preckwinkle and the entire Cook County Board for their continued support and commitment for public transit. We appreciate their partnership and support and look forward to working with them on other endeavors. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of Chairman Kirk Dillard and the team at the RTA, I'm happy to be here this morning. My name is Michael Lewis, and I'm happy to be here representing both the Board of Directors of the Regional Transportation Authority and as a resident of Olympia Fields, a south suburban community long served by Metro, uh, the Metro Electric Line. From both a regional and local perspective, the Fair Transit South Cook Project is an example of the kind of leadership and innovation that our transit system must pursue if we are to bring improved service, lower costs, and more access to the areas in our region with the greatest need. This project will serve us well today 
by providing expanded services at reduced cost to the essential workers who have been and still are reliant on the transit system and will provide us with valuable information as we plan for our transit system's recovery once the pandemic is behind us. I commend President Preckwinkle, Executive Director Dewinsky, Executive Director Donahue on their leadership and partnership. And we are proud to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I'd like to thank Madam President Preckwinkle for her leadership in helping launch this project. As always, you've been instrumental in making sure that residents in the Southland continuously have a seat at the table to ensure projects led by the Department of Transportation and Highways are always viewed through the equity lens, and for that, our department thanks you. I'd also like to extend a huge thank you to Metro Board Chairwoman Romaine Brown, who I know is not here today, and PACE Board Chair Richard Wisniewski. And if not for our combined efforts, we wouldn't be standing here today announcing this exciting project that is designed to provide lasting equitable benefits for residents and businesses in the Southland. I'd like to thank also thank all the Cook County Commissioners who unfortunately some of them weren't able to make it here yet or I'm not sure if their staff are here but for their unwavering support for helping us to fund the Fair Transit pilot as well. The Fair Transit pilot project is not something that just took shape overnight or single-handedly. This has been years in the making and we're excited to see the hard work and efforts made by so many come to fruition. This project puts equity first and foremost and serves as a building block for future transportation projects. In 2019, the county's Department of Transportation and Highways completed the South Cook Mobility Study, and this is the study that provided the fundamental understanding of the issues that this area faces when it comes to transportation. The study showed that connectivity and mobility to other areas of the county were very challenging leading to high unemployment rates, crime, and poor health outcomes. Our goals moving forward were clear, reduce disparities and increase access to employment. Over the last few decades, South Cook has experienced the 13.7% unemployment rate, and that's 40% higher than the rest of the county. This is no coincidence. Residents who live in the South Cook have the worst transportation options and live in one of the county's most transit-dependent regions of Cook County. Access to jobs has diminished, leaving residents with no choice but to seek employment further from home. An average commute for South Cook residents is nearly 24 miles, the longest in the entire county. Using the existing infrastructure, Fair Transit will save time and money for residents living and traveling in South Cook. With reduced fares along Metra's electric and Rock Island lines, as well as improved service along Pace's 352 Halstead Corridor, we're taking the first steps forward in reaching our goal to help create more accessibility and enhanced service for residents in the Southland. We're grateful for you, Madam President, and your administration that continues to make significant investments to better the lives of South Cook residents. Equal access to affordable and reliable transportation options has officially arrived in South Cook. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Acting Superintendent of Transportation and Highways, Sis Killen, to wrap us up. Sis? Thank you, John. Your insight and decades of experience have been crucial to launching this pilot. The entire Department of Transportation and Highways has worked hard to lay the groundwork for the launch of this project. And thank you, Madam President, for your continued guidance. Without your leadership and vision and that of the Board of Commissioners, we would not be where we are today. I am so grateful to Metro Board Chair Romaine Brown, CEO Jim Derwinski, 
PACE Board Chair Richard Kwasniewski and RTA Board Member Mike Lewis for partnering with us and recognizing the benefits of this project and how it will impact our residents' daily lives. Fair Transit officially enters its first phase today. While residents and travelers to our Southland will see the immediate benefits, we are looking beyond today. The goal is to ensure that after this three-year pilot has ended, we have a sustainable and robust program that gives our residents efficient and affordable transit options to get to work, school, appointments, errands, and leisure activities. We're focused on the Southland because it's one of the most transit-dependent portions of our county and is traditionally one of the most underserved as well. The Southland provides many unique benefits when it comes to development opportunities. This pilot and its increased access to transit unlocks a robust workforce that will support the growth of not only our current businesses, but will also provide additional incentive to those who are looking to make the Southland their home. Today's launch is part of a long journey. Planning for this pilot began well before the pandemic, and we pressed on despite it. We are adjusting our plans and metrics based on the reality that's on the ground today. We must ensure that we're meeting the current demands of our community while we look ahead and plan for the future. Throughout this pilot, we will analyze ridership and conduct surveys to gauge what works and what additional changes in the fare structures may be made in order to keep us on track. We look forward to our continued partnerships with the transit agencies and with the community as this process unfolds. We've already conducted a pre-pilot survey and we've begun assessing the feedback we've received regarding the transit challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic has created for residents and their families. We've also engaged our Southland community partners through virtual meetings to discuss our outreach plans. One goal that we continue to keep top of mind is seamless transferability across all transit agencies in our region. We believe that it is critical in ensuring that our residents can effectively navigate this county. Fair Transit will create increased mobility and inclusion for the residents in South Cook, a longstanding need that we are proud to address and meet today. Thank you. I'll now turn things back over to Madam President. Um, thank you. I'd like to thank Carmen Sanders and Michael Albert for their sign language interpretation. Um, do we have, where is, where is Nick? Uh, yes, go ahead, Alex. to know he said we talked before about the fact that increased ridership would um, help absorb some of the extra costs of the service um, increases and, and uh, fare reductions and do we still expect that that might be the case sure so um, obviously we're going to be um, studying the increase in the ridership that we anticipate um, of course, with the circumstances with COVID, we know that um, uh, there's going to uh, uh, still be uh, a need for the uh, increased ridership to bring some revenue, but, but not enough to do any of the offsetting at this time. But again, we realize that all of this is uh, uh, things that we're going to need to look at. Um, we have to work out some of these kinks. Um, but at this time, we know, again, overall, as some transit ridership is down, we're going to have to just closely monitor those numbers. Absolutely. So the follow-up to the question is, is uh, that it, 
with some of the numbers being down because of COVID, is that going to skew some of the data? And uh, the answer is it, it will, but we definitely think that, again, as we work out some of the uh, trends that we're going to be seeing, uh, we're going to be in better place with just, again, the optimism that uh, this effort is going to uh, continue to bring people to perhaps uh, new opportunities, new jobs, uh, things that after, you know, the uh, pandemic uh, confidence is growing, uh, we're going to be able to look at some of those uh, trends and, uh, again, hopefully be able to identify this as being a solution for some of the transit options in the Southland. On the, if that's on the South Chicago branch? Yeah, there, the question is, is there's a piece of property on the South Chicago branch near 75th. Have we been looking at that possibility of um, expansion parking? The answer is, yeah, we've talked with the community out there and the aldermen out there, and we're looking at that opportunity right now in COVID. Certainly, we're going to see where ridership patterns start developing with Fair Transit South Cook. And as the ridership patterns dictate, we will eventually look at expanding our footprint. So the question is, what impact has the latest stimulus package had on Metro's prospects and then FACE's prospects, okay? Uh, what, what impact has the latest stimulus package had? Well, obviously, it's very, very, very good news from Washington that there's going to be another stimulus package. Metro projected a budget hold this year of $70 million. Um, that hole actually is growing because of the fact that we're not starting as high as we wanted to last year. So it has a very positive impact, and it's going to allow us to do a lot of more flexible things in the years to come, in 21 and 22. Hi, good morning. Rocky Donahue with Pace Plus. And yes, the, the stimulus package, as Jim said, is is great news for, for Pace. We received a uh, little over $100 million in uh, CARES funding. 
And with this next round, um, we anticipate getting about another $36 million, which is obviously going to allow us to continue to keep service on the street and people employed. And, and hopefully we get a vaccine soon and, and ridership comes back and the economy comes back.